Hello, nice to be with you. Today we're going to share some startling facts. First of all, let us open our hearts to the Holy Spirit so that he may fill us and speak through us. So that all who are watching or hearing this will be filled with the Holy Spirit to understand the truth behind what we're about to share. We are at war. Anyone who looks around now and sees the seeming quiet of the environment and thinks there is no war going on needs his head examined. The evil forces at war with the good forces. These are the end times. Paul told us in the scriptures that we're not fighting flesh and blood, but powers and principalities in high places. The seven arch demons have taken over the world. In case you're hearing about them for the first time, they are Levathian, Asmodeus, Belberit, Belphegor, Beelzebub, Astaros, Reptilus, Sadgopinata, the woman of Babylon. Out of all I've mentioned, the most wicked ones now is Asmodeus. Asmodeus is the arch demon that's promoting lust. Lust is a sin against God. Lust is what is responsible for all the immorality, homosexuality, lesbianism, and careless immorality that's floating around the world, promoted strongly now by the media. You look around you. Can you watch anything on TV these days or video without sex? Can you walk the streets of any town or city without seeing women half naked, trotting their stuff all over the place? Can you read any books these days that are clean and wholesome? Can you go to any party and see people still just dancing to enjoy themselves? All the dance is now sex. Sex in public. That is what is happening in all parties now. And did anyone tell you how those dances came about? You see the intricate movements that suggest, you know, sexuality with every step? And do you ever think, where did those dances come from? I had a friend who lived in Port Harcourt, whose friend had an experience with a demon in the bush. He went hunting one day, and all of a sudden a demon appeared in front of him and says to him, look, do not be afraid. I'm going to teach you a dance. You will go to the village and teach it to the young girls. At Christmas, they will dance it. And while you're teaching it, if you have any difficulty, just wish and you will see me amongst you. Truly, the young man went to the town, gathered the people, and started teaching young girls this dance. And one day as he was teaching them what he had learned from the demon, he actually saw the demon amongst them. And this dance was rehearsed until Christmas time when it was displayed to the public. And the dance had a lot of pelvic movement in it. What was the idea? The idea was anybody who saw this dance mesmerized by the movement will have nothing in their minds but sex. And this is what is happening now every party you go. Satan and his agents have taught the young people how to dance sexually so that anybody who sees this dance or takes part in them have nothing in their minds but sex. But you ask young people, why do you do this when you dance? This one signifies the serpent. The serpent, you know, plucking people off. But they do this in the dances and they don't know where it comes from. Demons taught someone these dances and these people come and teach other people. Just like you see women dress anyhow. And you say, where did this style come from? It came from the demons. Demons come, teach some girl some dressing and the girl teach other girls and nobody cares how did this come about. The demons are everywhere now. The battle is at its highest. Now, Asmodeus is the demon of lust. There's the demon of pride, as you can see all over the place now. People are so full of themselves. Everywhere people go, they must be noticed. You know, they must have hegemony over others. They must stand out. They must be themselves. Nobody cares about the well-being of the other person. Is me, myself, and I, the trinity of the self. That is promoted by Levathian, the demon of pride. Now you photograph yourself, hold up your cell phone, and you pose, and it's a selfie. What vanity can be greater than that? 
or you put your picture as wallpaper on your phone so you're always looking at yourself for what? That's the highest form of vanity. A picture is meant for others. Your picture is meant for others to remember you. Or a picture for you to remember an event. But when you put your picture as a wallpaper and each time you pick your phone you're looking at yourself is idolatry. Self-worship. You know, so you see how you know, selfies, me and myself and I, I'm so good, I post on myself, I take my own pictures, if others don't appreciate me, I'll appreciate myself. All these are part of me, myself and I. But then of course, anger, the, the bellberry is the demon of anger. His own is no forgiveness for anything. Somebody does things to you, you have to do back to the person twice. You know, no tolerance, nothing. And this is taught in videos, in movies, in plays. You watch all the nonsense Nigerian videos that are coming out and see what you see in them. Is there anything you can see that you can take away? It's all rough talk, rough actions, rough everything. You know, Belberis to promote discord, disillusionment, dissatisfaction, jealousy, hatred, envy, resentment, and all this stuff. And this is what you get in all the media. And the media is the way now that you can reach everybody. It's not any no longer a person-to-person -person thing. You know, let me talk to this, influence this now. Now the media now has a means of mass influence, mass influence. And they, you know, like they are dragging everybody to the little screen. Everybody is now on the little screen. Even if you don't have it in your home, or you can get away from it when you leave the house, they found a way of piping it to you wherever you are. It's now on your phone, you know. You pick up your phone and anything you want to see is there. They tell you how to get it, so you can't get away from this. Constantly influenced, manipulated by the media. So all these seven arch demons are now ruling the world. They are ruling the world, and you are the target. Now Satan fell in the beginning. He was one of the most brilliant creatures God ever made. He was majestic. The angels heralded his presence, and he was used to that. When he now thought of himself more and thought that all the reverence and power and honor was coming because of him, he felt that he did not need to be under the control of a God. He did not want to be under God anymore. And he felt that any rules made by God in heaven to bind him or to make him behave in a certain way, he wasn't going to be part of that. So he rebelled. And he was cast down from heaven. When he was cast down, God did not remove his powers from him. And one of the powers that God had given to him, one of his greatest talents, was music. Satan used to herald the music of the morning and herald the angels to the presence of God in worship. And he saw how music can touch even the angels. So when he fell, God didn't remove his powers from him. He is still the cherub with the vials, as the Bible says. So now that he is not with God, what has he vowed? He has vowed to use music to destroy the souls of men. He vowed to God that not one soul would go to heaven. He vowed to God that whatever good plans God had about humanity, he Satan would destroy. And he would not come to you the way he is. He is the master of disguise. The Bible says he will appear as the angel of light. So what happens? Satan has, you know, many marine spirits. Most of the waters you see around are filled with marine spirits. That, you know, they just come into the land in waves, in waves, in waves. They possess people. They have flats next to yours. They enter the same taxes. They set up churches, shops, and all kinds of places. Churches, yes. Marine spirits set up a lot of churches. Because Satan cannot come to you the way he is. So he pretends to be another savior, another Christ. So it sets up churches. And when you look behind, the aim of most of the churches is wealth and the things of the world. Nothing about the eight Beatitudes. In Matthew 5, verses 3 to 10, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, 
for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Who still preaches these? In fact, who still talks about the Ten Commandments? Your salvation and I is depend on how we obey the Ten Commandments. Who still reminds us of the Ten Commandments? Instead, they throw biblical passages at us and spend hours raving up and down stages trying to explain a biblical passage. When they, all they need to do is to remind us about the Ten Commandments because the whole of scripture is about good behavior and how to worship God. It's not all about self-empowerment, self-actualization. Who still tells you about the Ten Commandments? I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. They blaspheme the name of Jesus at every meeting. They scream down the name of their God as if it's their mate. In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! If Jesus is not your mate, learn from the Muslims. When they want to mention the name of Muhammad, they surround him with, you know, eulogies. They don't just say Muhammad. Jesus is God. And before you call his name, the Bible says, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. They don't even dare to show any sign of reverence or respect. They just call the name anyhow, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, by which they please the devil. If you want to call on the name of Jesus, you must do so with the utmost reverence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, tilting your head in veneration. Thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath day. Who is still talking about the Sabbath day? That only thing you're permitted to do on the Sabbath is to, you know, take stock of what your relationship with God has been over the past week and how you can improve on it. Relax with your family sharing Christian words, videos or prayers. Who are still preachers about keeping the Sunday holy? Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Who is still preaching this? So that thou mayest long live in the land the Lord God has provided for you. Thou shalt not kill or hate. Thou shalt not commit adultery in thought, word or deed. Now, look at all the gatherings of so-called Christians and see the immoral dressing that's leading many souls to perdition. They would have been better if they didn't come to church. Because at church, they come across women half-dressed, showing off everything they have to seduce men. And these people go away from church more laden with sin than before they came. Which pastor is preaching about immoral dressing? The Bible says, for you to commit the sin of adultery, you do not need to do it physically. But once you look at a woman lustfully, you've committed the sin in your heart. So what do women do? Women dress in such a way that no man can look at them without being lustful. So the women are sure they dress in such a way that when you look at them, you must have lustful thoughts. And this goes right across the board from young girls to women to even married women. Who is preaching about that? The eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal or cheat. Many of our churches are populated by those who are corrupt, who have stolen public money. Once they donate those money to the pastors, the pastors cover them. It's as if the money has now been sanctified because it's been donated to a pastor. Who is still talking about stealing? 
thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor thou shalt not gossip against thy neighbor thou shalt tolerate thy neighbor's faults who is talking about tolerance now in today's churches if people do things to you you send holy ghost fire on them you do not tolerate their wrongdoing they must not do it which pastor is teaching you to be silent in the face of the greatest insults thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife now we know what is happening in a lot of churches these days pastors uh, you know seducing people's wives and under the pretext of counseling many terrible things are happening many terrible things and even when married women are dressed so that you can lust after them they make you commit two sins one against the sixth commandment the second against the ninth because when a married woman dresses lustfully he's making you commit two sins you will look at her lustfully and because she's married you break the ninth commandment all the pastors do these days is to let you covet wealth covet what belongs to others you know the feeling is well why do they have it my god can also give it to me it's another way of saying i covet i'm jealous of what they have me to i want it there's nothing wrong with having an ambition but not ambition based on what others have pastors are preaching worldly prosperity worldly materialism and flaunting their wealth so which pastor is still teaching the truth modern christians have nothing to do with that they have nothing to do with the fact that you have to lay your life down for another person no it's me myself and i the modern christianity you must not be ill you must not be sick you must not be poor you must have money some of the pastors will preach to you that i mean how can your god be so rich has everything and you're poor they forget what jesus said in the scriptures or what the bible is always saying First of all, seek ye the kingdom, the rest will be added unto you. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul? Which pastor is still preaching her salvation now? Which pastor is preaching heaven? Which pastor is preaching long suffering so that he can attain heaven? Which pastor is preaching all the virtues? All they tell you is how the Bible can enable you, empower you, make you not suffer because you're a child of God. Falsehood. Jesus said, <laughs> Birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Nowadays, the Bible says that if you want to follow God, you sell everything. You tell us the kingdom of God is like a jewel. You find in the field, you sell everything and you'll go and get it. The rich man goes to God, Jesus, and says, I want to make heaven, I cannot end the kingdom. And Jesus says, well, keep all the commandments. The young man says, I already do, do that. And when Jesus looks at him, he says, well, yes, you already do. But now you know what? To prove your total commitment, go and sell everything you have and follow me. We are told in the scriptures and the man became very sad. These days, what do we have? People who are engineers who are failed as engineers. People who are doctors who are failed as doctors. People who are bankers who are failed as bankers grab the Bible, deceive people, and they become rich. So that's the opposite of what God said. God says, you leave everything behind and follow me. You leave your riches behind and follow me. Nowadays, they can't succeed in their profession, so they hold the Bible, deceive people, and before you know it, they have private jets, they have limousines, they have all kinds of things, and they say, oh yeah, their God is a rich God. Jesus says in the end, many will come to him and say, in your name, I cast out the devil. In your name, I heal the sick. In your name, I raise the dead. In your name, I cure the headache. And Jesus will look at them sternly and say to them, go away from me, I do not know you. Because you did all these things under the power of another, not mine. So you see, we're in trouble. Satan is now appearing as the angel of light. Somebody once wrote a book, and it, you know, every time I think about it, I shudder. It says, how to raise the dead, cure the sick, <laughs> perform all the miracles in the world, and go to hell. Because all of those are no indications of holiness, as we're being told. So the demons are now crafty. They're coming at us from all angles, from all angles. 
They have come from the water, millions of them. Millions every day influencers from uh, millions are like human beings walking the earth. One of the saints was told that a lot of the people you see on earth today are not actually human beings. They are demons. For example, you see the young ladies and they see other young ladies have dressed. Well, they think, well, if she can do it, I can also do it. Not knowing a lot of those people they see are demons. Look at the way they wear their hairs these days. I mean, look at it. We are being told that unless you are European, you are no longer beautiful. That's what our ladies are telling us. So every lady now has long hair and all this, we do not belong to them. And there are very many videos floating around about how some of this hair comes about. Some of them are actually offerings given by young Indian girls to their gods and goddesses. And some Chinese people go there, you know, dye up the thing and sell it to Africa mostly. <laughs> when Africans are ashamed of their hair, so they put all this hair all over themselves. They forget the hair does many things, wonderfully bad things to women. One, there's some natural rays that come from the sun which are healthy for the brain. This hair blocks it. The, this rays cannot get at the natural head. Second thing, by covering the head all the time, certain diseases will develop which make a woman not ever again be able to use her natural hair because certain patches will now develop which are irreversible. The first spiritual thing is that they, the false hair holds back a lot of blessings from God because God looks down, he wants to bless his children and he sees something strange that he did not create and he says, well, I didn't create that person that way. Who is it? So the blessings hang in the air this is why you see a lot of women who wear these braids, they can't think straight, they're always anxious, they're always sensuous, they cannot stay long in prayer sessions, they can't meditate because the hair is it's not from God, it's not good, you know, it's an entrance. It's like you give your head to the enemy, hmm? you give your head to the enemy, all this artificial hair, it's not, it's not. This is why you see 90% of Nigerian women now do not have their natural hair. And this is why things are going bad every day. They can no longer see what is good. Housewives are dressing like prostitutes, not to talk about young people. And when you say, why do you dress like that? They say, well, my husband likes it. So all this is true now. The don't is all coming from the spirit behind this hair. We know of a certain woman somewhere in Surilere who had this hair, and somehow after midnight she'll be feeling little snakes crawling all over her head crawling literally crawling and she will feel it and feel the little snakes the first time it happened she jumped out of bed to the mirror to see and she will see natural hair and i mean her wig or whatever weave on what you call it she'll go back to bed a couple of minutes later what happened again she'll go to the mirror nothing because the next day she just did tell the serverless, you know, just scrape the thing to the ground. And she started to work. Her life changed thereafter. She could not think properly, plan properly, you know. All her faculties were now intact. Hmm? So there's consequence for all this. These are part of the attacks. The lies have gone on so long that the truth is now hard to, to believe. So we are surrounded by evil spirits all over the place. But God is beautiful. God knows, you can see them. Sometimes people walk around with as many as 150 demons walking with them. You know, particularly those who desecrate Jesus in the Eucharist, those who, who you know, who are hardened in sin, those who don't want to know God, all these kind of things they're doing. Demons just come and follow them. That's why they can't hear the truth. By the time you want to tell them the truth, their hearts are closed already because there's so many demons around them. You know, once a holy soul was taken to a party where many people were, you know, a cocktail, people were just walking around with a glass in their hands drinking, and she was made to see what was present spiritually. She found that a lot of people were surrounded by demons, some were even sitting on their shoulders, on their heads, and each time they did this, one fell off. You know, very few people had angels around them. Hmm? So when these demons do around you, what do they do? They hate God, so they make you hate God. But you know, you may not feel that aversion as it were, but they will make you weary about things to do with God. This is why the demon Asteros, the demon of lukewarmness, is also holding sway in the world now. Lukewarmness about things to do with God. 
They are very excited about the things of the world. You plan for the party you're going to go next week. You plan for that event you're going to go. Many people are going to a, a, a night of a thousand laughs. When should be going to a, 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 going to a night of a thousand tears, thousand tears because of the ways of life. But no, there'll be somewhere where comedians are cracking jokes, blaspheming God, cracking jokes which abuse other people cracking jokes which make nonsense of wholesome thoughts, philosophies and ideas, cracking jokes about all things and then <laughs> laughing their lives away. Hmm? It's, it's, it's a night of a thousand laughs. <laughs> should be a night of a thousand tears. But this is what is happening now. Demons are just everywhere. They won't let you think about God. They won't let you pray. They won't let you meditate. They won't let you be nice to anyone. If people are nice to people these days because if they are afraid of the, the repercussions if they're not nice to others. It's not because they want to be nice. Somebody says good morning to you, don't know what it means. He's just saying it so that, you know, it's a matter, it really, in his heart, he really doesn't mean it. So, so much evil floating around. The Satan is just everywhere. It's everywhere now. It's everywhere. It's in the music. Music. Music is the only thing that can put a thought in your brain and take it to your mind without you knowing it. Music has a way of changing and making you do things you don't want to do. Music is the only thing that can grow, go through both hemispheres of the brain without your being able to say no. And this is the power in the hand of Satan. This is why you see all the musicians, they all, all the videos are sex videos now. They are telling us that without sex, there's no music. Look at all the videos you see in hip hop, Niger Z, Channel O, Trace, all these rubbish channels. It's all sex. Sex. You know? There's no dance anymore. It's all sex. And all the musicians are sex objects now. You know, all this movement they make, you know, all around these hips, around the hair. You know, all to disturb people's minds, disturb their consciences, put nothing in their hearts but immorality and impurity. Don't forget, the sin of impurity is one of the sins that God is most unwilling to forgive because it reminds him of the initial disobedience of Adam and Eve. So this is the sin Satan is using to destroy souls. Now, in case you think uh, <laughs> I'm talking too much or maybe I'm saying too much, Let's watch this and see how the demons actually plan. Because, you know, the Bible said the children of God are, you know, children of the world are wiser than the children of men. Let's sit back now and see what plans, how the evil spirits meticulously plan every evil that they wish to push to the world. Fellow demons, I have been looking over some of our human files, and it is cause for concern. We may have underestimated God and his creations. There are billions of humans now, and we have still managed to keep the majority in sin. There are too many humans. 50% of human reproduction is a result of teenage pregnancies, fornication and adultery. I think that would make us responsible for the high population. So we have created a problem that we need to fix. All over the world murder and suicide rates have increased. Homosexuality and bisexuality is also very popular, even in some churches. I think the record should show a massive decline in human reproduction. For every human who dies or gets converted to a contrary lifestyle, a hundred more are born globally. We need to do more. If I may, adolescents spent 1500 hours watching television and only 900 in school annually. By the time a child finishes elementary, he would have seen 10,000 murders. This figure would double by the end of high school. By the time a human reaches 40, he would have spent 10 years watching television. Impressive. But we still need to do more. Fellow demons, I want you to seriously consider what we are up against. It is not God's will that any human perish. He will do everything in his power to save them. 
It is our duty to make sure they perish. Am I making myself clear? We have been targeting Christians and have destroyed the desire of many for God's word and prayer. Many do not fast or even witness to those who are perishing in the act of sin. We have nullified the effects of many churches on the community. The reports of people getting saved has been reduced by 64%. I think we are doing a good job. Do you sleep? Yes. Then we can do more. No demon in this room is supposed to find time to sleep and eat. Now tell me where we stand with our attack on the churches. The leaders of the churches are revising their teachings. They encourage members to get back to the word. What they don't know is, less than half an hour is given to Bible reading in any given week, which amounts to less than 26 hours for the year. Christians have lost the desire to read the very words that tell them how to live. The result is, they mix the sacred with the profane, surrendering all hope of them making it into heaven. Wonderful. Now we have to find a way to force human reproduction into a massive decline. We are thinking a global recession. Making the cost of living so high very few will be able to afford it, unless by dishonest means. The need for money will be so great, and job opportunities so limited, that crime and violence will escalate to alarming levels in many countries. Guns will fall off the market like chewing gums. The prisons will be overcrowded. The graves will expand like hell itself. That should take care of 15% of the population. What else do we have? We can use their own bodies against them. Worldwide pornography. We introduce this on all levels from billboards to public newspapers. We make pornography an occupation, a career. We will make pornography freely accessible by everyone. It will become a way of life for many. A secret door to pleasure. Nudity is marketable. It is 80% of the population's interest. We start from the mild. A star girl in the daily newspaper, wearing nothing at the top. Then as the desires increase, we introduce more until a man's appetite for sex cannot be satisfied with having just one partner. Adultery and fornication will become an acceptable way of life. Even in the church. The scent of sin will go up into God's nostrils. The atmosphere will be utterly polluted with what he hates. Humans will think of nothing but sex. Wouldn't it contribute greatly to our problem? Not if there is a way for humans to protect themselves from pregnancies and diseases during sexual activity. Imagine what will happen if humans had a way of having sex without fear. You are thinking birth control. Yes. Protection for both male and female. We'll have our products on every shelf. They'll stand out on their own and will be advertised in such a way that even Christians will be convinced. Once that is established, childbirth will decrease. And sexual activity will rise. Exactly. Sounds real good so far. What else do we have? There is something that we have noticed about these humans over the years. It seems like great emphasis is placed on self. They seem to have forgotten that self-denial is a prerequisite to a Christ-centered life. The self, it seems, have taken top priority. I expected as much. We think it would be good if we applied even greater pressure in this area. Spice up this world a bit. Make material things a lot more attractive to the human eye. This will increase their desire for gain and decrease their passion for God. Men shall be lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Humans have always preferred instant pleasure above spiritual gain. They spend more time on themselves than they do with anything concerning God. Indeed. But all these are outer attacks. It is their minds that we need to control. That is where I come in. I will tell you of our inevitable victory. Within the confines of these walls, there exists a secret chamber. 
Within that chamber are thousands of demons that have been undergoing extensive training. These demons have read the human manuscripts hundreds of times and have committed the concepts to memory. I refer to them as the New Age Seducers. How effective are these seducers? They can convince a man to become a woman. They will convince men to kill themselves for no reason. They will seduce men into having sexual relations with animals. That should turn the stomach of heaven. Precisely. Men will turn on each other within their own groups. The church will be against the church. Politicians against politician. Family against family. The seducers can accomplish this? Without a doubt. Once each group is divided, they'll be unable to stand. There will be some who will only listen to the voice of God. A minority at best. Humans no longer see the need to protect their minds, thanks to our influence through the media. They entertain every thought, every fantasy, and every lust. Many don't know who they are, or whose they are, and that is a great advantage for us. On top of that there has been a significant decline in prayers and the sincere study of the Holy Scriptures. We have the advantage. Our paths increase as we draw closer to the end. It is time we exact our revenge on God for kicking us out of heaven by sending as many humans to hell as we possibly can. So we go all out this time. I do not want to push God's hand too quickly. I want to savor every moment. I want to watch Jesus beg for these carnal beings till his heart bleeds again. I want him to watch as his children are reduced to godlessness. I want him to watch as his prized creation choose to fornicate and live adulterous lives. I want him to see the hungry die of starvation. The widows and orphans and those in prison go unvisited, and purity become a thing of the past. I want him to witness a twelve-year-old giving birth to a child and I want him to watch his precious believers spending hours before the television watching our programs and listening to our music and taking just a minute to brush the dust from their Bibles while spending hours on Facebook and Twitter. I want him to witness them turning their backs on him for the pleasures of this life. Best of all, I want to watch him resist his own temptation to destroy this world again. Our victory is inevitable. Humans have proven time and time again that they are beyond redemption. They will share our fate in hell. I am convinced that we can still win this war. Arm yourselves, fellow demons. We go to war. So while you sleep, they're busy planning your downfall. And you know, if you lose your soul on this earth, you're the greatest mungu. No matter what you attain in this world, the demons are the ones, you know, you know, making you want to be famous, wanting you to have money, wanting you want to be... I mean, you go into the press, oh, they're having... Who is the sex, sex, sexiest actress? <laughs> Sexiest actress, and you see actually some of their posing like hell, demons are smelling. Sexiest. If they know what that word means to God, they would die of shame. But you know, they make all these demons, you know, inspire all this stuff. You know, so, but is God going to leave you to them? No. God has his plan for you, He has given you the angels. As we said, each person has a guardian angel. The garden angel teaches you how to obey God and lead you gently to the path of salvation. The garden angel reminds you of the duty you owe God. He reminds you why you have to be pure, chaste, and holy. And he's always there to protect you from all danger because the demons always want to harm you all the time. They're not just interested in your physical death with their plan every minute. They want your soul to die. So. They're not just interested, they just want to harm you, body and soul, all the time. So your guardian angel is there to protect you. And if you pray to them, they'll be powerful with you. 
The only thing is, you have to ask them for their help and their protection. And one prayer to say every morning now, we a lot of people, and I mean to tell you, a lot of people who are now dead, who are now in hell, could be alive today with a chance to save their souls if the day they left their home and died, they had just called on their guardian angels. 80% of all insurance companies in the world would close if people every day would call on their guardian angels because 80% of all accidents can be avoided by the angels if only you call on them. A lot of sicknesses, incurable diseases that people contract can be avoided and averted if only people would pray to their angels. So I give you a short prayer to say to your guardian angel. If you can't memorize it, call us. we we'll send it to you. He goes, Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits you here, ever always be at my side to light and guide, to rule and guard. Amen. Now, if you want to call on the Prince of Angels, St. Michael, then you say, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May the Lord rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Satan hates to hear the name Michael. Because in the beginning, Michael defeated him and will always defeat him. When you call and say, Michael, all of hell is shaking. And when you say this prayer every day, St. Michael brings a shield around you, a spiritual shield you can't see, and he protects you immediately from any evil attack. But over the years, what has Satan done? Satan has made you to forget the role of the angels. How many people call on their angels every day? As we said before, people are going to answer to God when they die how they kept their guardian angels idle without ever asking them because if you don't ask your guardian angel it won't do anything for you it will just stand by aloof and watch all harm come to you because you didn't ask the bible says god says you must ask so that you may receive so always ask your guardian angel to be with you and call on the prince of angels if you can't remember those prayers just say angel of god my guardian dear be with me today and always and say Hello, St. Michael, Prince of the Holy Angels. Please protect me now and always. I mean, to remember those two, it will make a lot of difference in your life. Remember, we are at war against principalities and powers in high places. God has given us the remedy to all of them. That's devotion to the Holy Angels and to our daily communion and connection with God. We'll see you same time next week. Thank you for watching.